Joining us now for a reaction in Raleigh, North Carolina, is Saul Weisenberg, who was the number two attorney on the Bill Clinton Whitewater investigation and in Washington, Democratic strategist Richard Goodstein. All right, Saul, let's start with you. I had uh, fairly harsh words tonight after we learned more about uh, Jeannie Rhee and her association, uh, her past association uh, with Ben Rhodes, a personal attorney for Rhodes, uh, representing him in the uh, contacts with the House Intel Committee. Uh, obviously, uh, Andrew Weissman, Peter Strzok. The list seems to go on and on. Every day we learn more. What's your take? Well, I don't believe Mueller should uh, resign. I don't think there's a case for him resigning yet, but I'm very concerned about the Strzok situation. Uh, he never should have been picked to be the FBI lead agent on that investigation because, number one, as you pointed out, there's a conflict of interest since he was the lead agent working on uh, the Hillary email investigation. And don't forget this. He's a witness now, too, Laura. There is an IG's investigation of the uh, Hillary uh, email server investigation, and there are congressional investigations. Yeah, but Saul, so, so I got to jump in. Saul, so I got to jump in here. Yeah. Mueller is supposed to be, and we, we, we're going to play this montage in a moment uh, for Richard as well. He was this guy of unassailable character. Oh, he is, he's the best of the best to do this investigation. We have three rank partisans working on this investigation. Re, Weissman, and Strzok. It's not that they're just Democrats. That's fine. But they were actively working for political opponents of President Trump. And apparently, there's no, there's no issue with Mueller to actually reveal this to the public. We have to find it out how through our that, reporting how do you know on that Capitol Strzok Hill. Was working, how do you know that Strzok was working for his opponents? I've got a real problem with Strzok being on the case because of conflicts of interest. I have a real problem. I just, I just heard the stuff uh, today about Ms. Rhee, and I'm blown away by that. And I think that's very disturbing. Well, and well, I don't Strzok think was she sending an email, hired. except because Strzok was sending uh, texts to his, I guess, mistress back during the debate, who also worked on the investigation, we understand. Uh, and the, the, yeah, but the that problem, was really dumb. Right, but that but was Saul, really dumb. But you the, know, but I'll, you know, and yeah. I know. Yeah. Good. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm, all you know I'm saying. I know yeah, I'm that saying. You, that, let, let me just say. Yeah, good. Yeah. Here's the problem. This is not a run-of-the-mill investigation, Richard. I want you to get on this. It's not Thank the run-of-the-mill allegation. Don't be exasperated, Richard. You get plenty of time. I've known you forever. I never shortchange you. Uh, this has to be an unassailable team. This could not be a team of political adversaries of the president. That doesn't sit well with people, and it casts doubt on the integrity of this investigation, the appearance of a political conflict of interest. Richard, your response. Yeah. This is not James Carville running this investigation. Bob Mueller was picked by Reagan, Bush 1, and Bush 2 for very important federal law enforcement positions, right? Andrew Weissman took on the Genovese, <clears throat> Gambino, and Camino families and the Enron prosecution. This is the kind of guy we want. And incidentally, if you and people watching here think that Donald Trump did nothing wrong, this is exactly the kind of team headed by Mueller that you should want to stay there. And as far as this, this Jeannie Re, incidentally, I worked at Wilmer Cutler some time ago. I happened not to know them. I left before they were there. Um, look, if we're going to somehow impute to every lawyer what their client may or may not have did, look, again, Ben Rhodes was, could be interviewed by the House. Look, unless every lawyer, Laura, was hired by Mueller, worked for the Federalist Society, I doubt you'd be no, happy. No, I no, doubt it. That's not what we're talking this about, is, Saul. You can jump in here. This, you can jump in. It's not yeah, different. This is different. Look, the, listen, the one second, thing, Saul. One the second, Gino, Saul. The Gene Lee Saul, thing second, is great. It's fundamentally Saul. different. Saul, listen. Pardon? Neil Gorsuch made contributions to the Republican National Committee, that made is... contributions to Republican candidates. So this He's notion that leading. somehow Richard, political contributions... Richard, I don't care about I don't care about Guys, one at a time, it's not going to work. One at a time, it's not going to work. Okay, here's, what, here's what, one at a time. This is, this is how it would go down if the shoe were on the other foot. If we had a fact pattern involving a, uh, a Democrat being investigated, like Hillary Clinton mm -hmm. on the email server, with a Republican with these types of text messages and representations... The left would be raising holy hell about it, Laura. and I would say maybe mm -hmm. for good reason, because Laura. you cannot have a big special prosecution, as we're seeing right now, with a gaggle of partisans 
who are adversaries working, whether for the Clinton Foundation, this working end. for Ben Rhodes, working and for all these removed, different people. Laura, so this go ahead. Was immediately, he was removed immediately as soon what as those Weissman? texts came out. What about Weissman? What about Reid? They're the, both working the for the investigation. Listen, you Saul? haven't made Excuse a case me. for Weissman. You haven't made a case for Weissman Listen. being unqualified okay. or having a so, conflict of interest Andrew because of Weiss. one text okay, he wrote. Here, but, you want me to lay but, it out but for you? But the Reid thing is significant. The yeah. Reid thing is extremely significant, and Mueller should have known better. And he should have known better not to guy, have this guy head of the investigation. But hey, I got a hey, message Saul, for all Saul, the Democrats. Listen to me. Don't I got a for all the Democrats. I've got news for you, Saul. Like your other listen guests. To me. Hold on. Listen to I got me. To wait. No, 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 no. Come on. I got a Come message on. for let all Richard the Democrats. I'm not a part of the message Guys, for let all the Democrats. In. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Saul, sorry. By two to one, the American public thinks Donald Trump is dishonest, not, is reckless, and not stable. So if there happens to be somebody who works for Mueller, who shares the view that Donald Trump's not a peachy guy, guess what? He's like two-thirds of the public. Um, yeah. And it's rich. It, excuse me. It's rich. I don't have a problem with that. that when, one second. It I is don't have rich. a problem with that. It is rich. Here. Saul, listen to me. Yeah, yeah. It is rich when James Comey broke the rules to have his July 5th, 5th press conference attacking Hillary. Which is broke an idiotic the rules press conference. By issuing the, the October 28th letter and did nothing to inform yeah, the we're struck, we're struck change the language. about okay, the Russians it, 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 hey, helping okay, Trump. Okay, I got one Excuse more point me. into Saul here. One more point, because we're running way over. Saul, here, here's the problem. Well, that, that's a non-issue. My point is the, the Clinton not. people. Weiss, guys, the, the, the guys. Wait a second. I thought it was my turn. Yeah, let me, the, Saul. The, the, so, people, go ahead. the people on the left in the media who are complaining that Mueller is being unfairly attacked should look in the mirror. Because you mentioned James Carville. Carville, he set the playbook. He said, and I quote, Ken Starr is one mistake away from having his kneecaps busted. And that was a man who was regularly invited to the White House. So I don't like all this stuff that's happening to Mueller. I don't think Mueller Good. should resign. But they're taking the Clinton playbook. Yeah, the war room. And let me tell you, it's coming back to bite them. All right, guys, uh, there's a lot more to say on this, but unfortunately, we're way over. Thank you both for joining us, Richard and Saul. It's Corey Lewandowski, former Trump campaign manager, and David Bossi, former Trump deputy campaign manager. Both are the authors of the new book, Let Trump Be Trump, the inside story of the rise of his presidency. A uh, few snickers along the way watching that, reliving all of those moments. I mean, I, I remember so many times, you know, we just thought, well, that's it. Right. I mean, you know, some of these comments, some of the things that were said, um, you know, the excess Hollywood tape. You know, you really couldn't find anybody around who thought that he could survive that, Corey. Everybody thought the same thing. The mainstream media's narrative was Donald Trump has stepped over the line and he's going to get out of the race and he's going to quit and the voters are going to walk away from him. But what they saw in him was an authentic, genuine nature of someone who's willing to say and do things no other candidate was willing to do. And but at you the guys end of had, the day, had moments where you looked at each other and were like, you know, OK, this is over. We've got to go find a new job pretty soon. And um, there's no way this is going to work. Look, of course, there were times where as professional political operatives, you say, boy, this one's going to be a tough one to get out of. Right. This, you know, maybe we cross the line and then the candidate would double down and he would bring attention to an issue that no one was talking about. And I think of illegal immigration. Right. No one in the Republican Party was talking about that issue before Donald Trump raised that issue. He raised it on day one, and now it is a serious issue that this country is talking about. And the travesty of justice that we saw last week in California is only in the news every day because of Donald Trump. Yeah, I mean, I mean, when in doubt, he would talk about building the wall. He'd get back to the stuff you want to talk about. But then in inevitably, you know, the next day he would do something else that would cause you guys, I'm sure, quite a bit of, of heartburn. I mean, I think about what, what about the decision to bring out the former Clinton accusers? and line them up at a table with President Trump, now President Trump in the middle of the table in St. Louis. Whose idea was that? That was Steve Bannon's. Uh, it was a brilliant stroke. Uh, it it, it refocused the debate, and it put it right back on to Bill and Hillary Clinton because three of them, three of the women, were accusers of Bill Clinton, and one of them was an accuser of Hillary Clinton being an enabler of somebody who raped her. So what we wanted to say was there's locker room talk and then there's action. And the president lost his law license. The president was fined for lying. So we and, and we know what the president, what Bill Clinton had done. And what we were trying to do is say, hey, let's make sure the media isn't going overboard here. And the president was unbelievable at that debate in St. Louis. It was the, in my point, in my opinion, it was the make or break of the campaign, and Donald Trump decimated Hillary Clinton in St. Louis. In terms of the team, you know, you had Ryan's Priebus at one point saying, you know, you need to drop out. You're going to have the biggest electoral loss in the history of anyone running for the presidency. What was your reaction when, you know, what happened in that moment? 
I, well, I was in the room. Okay. And, and Reince said those things, but he said things that, all, like you were just pointing out, as political professionals, all of us were thinking those different variations of things. And so Reince, when he said it, it was the most – he was – courageous for having done it in the sense that he's the chairman of the RNC. He had a different role than Corey or I or others on the team. We were Trump campaign staff. He was the chairman of the RNC and he was being, uh, you know, assaulted by different leaders, donors who wanted Trump to drop out. So it was it, 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 Reince Priebus stepped up and helped Donald Trump get ready for these debates. His assistance in debate prep f for St. Louis and for the third debate in, in um in Las Vegas. Without that, I don't know that uh, things would have gone as well. The president stepped up on the stage and delivered a masterful performances in both. But some of that was the preparation. I, I want to play just a, it's real quick, 20 seconds or something. I have an interview that I did with President Trump on Election Day. And, you know, when I put myself back in that moment, you remember that everybody thought Hillary was going to win based on the polls, right? I mean, because the polls have always worked basically, before. Um, and I asked him if, you know, everyone was asking whether or not he was going to concede. You know, are you, is he going to concede or is he going to fight this thing? Right? Play, play this little clip and then I want to get Corey's response. If you do lose tonight, what's your next move? Well, I'm going to have to see under what circumstances. It's largely a rigged system. And you see it at the polling booth, too. You know, you see. Are you saying that you believe this will not be over tonight, Mr. Trump? No, I'm not saying that. I say I have to look at you know, what's happening. I have to look at reports that are coming out. Corey, he was preparing the ground for maybe maybe fighting it if he lost. Look, let Trump be Trump details election night in intimate detail. And you know what it says? We had no uh, acceptance speech written. He had no uh, speech if he lost written because he wasn't going to. He's going to wait to see what the results were. And the mainstream media narrative, which was so unfair to President Trump, was are you going to make a concession speech when you lose? No one asked Hillary Clinton that. And what we saw that night was the failure of Hillary Clinton. Her true colors came out that night where she lost the election and she refused to stand before the American people and say, I concede this race. That's the cowardness of Hillary Clinton. But everybody in the mainstream media, and we talk about this in the book, was pushing Donald Trump to say, will you make a concession speech? And all of those pundits, they were wrong and he was right. David. You know what? And Hillary Clinton one year later is still... Uh, upset about the results of that election of losing. She still doesn't want to accept it. So you know what? They pushed it all on the, on the president in our book, Let Trump Be Trump. We detail all of those great backstories and how great it was to work alongside the president with him as our leader. Yeah. So, yeah, I know you guys say that, you know, he, he would break lesser men than you by his temper and the way he goes at you. You guys have stuck by him since day one. Um, he and that's he deserves sure. the best. We owe him the best. He deserves perfection. That's what the staff should do. And if you're not perfect, he lets you know. Right. And I honor that. David and Corey, thanks a lot, guys. Good to see you tonight. Thank you.